the latest studies on the Volga in Futuris. Special nets are required for this particular type of fishing. A group of Russian chemists and biologists are on board the academic Topichev, the main research vessel at the Institute Papanin, the largest hydrobiological institute in Russia. Their objective to better understand the evolution of its ecosystems, including fish biology, plant life, sedimentology and chemical pollution. The Volga and its 3,700 kilometers of fresh water rolls down from northwest Russia to the Caspian Sea. The history of Russia is linked to the Volga, but also other nationalities, like the Tatars, the Udmurts, or the Maris, who have been living here for centuries. The Volga has been a route for civilization and an essential element in the development of industry, transport and agriculture for the whole country. The researchers are fishing for the Caspian small herring called Kilka, a template salt water species which has been quietly moving upstream for decades. Now as global warming raises the temperature of the Volga, Kilka has become the predominant species in the upper Volga. Its presence has enriched the food chain, but Kilka brings its own problems such as new parasites. Global warming is indeed changing the whole of the Volga Basin's ecosystem. Today in the Volga Basin and in other rivers around like the Dnieper or the Don, more than 200 new species have naturalized and now live permanently. These include fish, mollusks and new aquatic plants, including tropical and subtropical species. For the past 40 years, scientists have been studying the ways in which the Volga's ecosystems are being challenged by climate change and chemical pollution. At the Institute's HQ, giant fish tanks house examples of the rich, fragile and ever-changing biodiversity of the upper Volga. Sturgeon has practically disappeared from the region, while other smaller species are now resident. Yuri Slinko is the head of the fish biology department at the Papanin Institute. Back at the lab, his team extracts DNA samples from the freshly caught kilka. Researchers hope genetic models will help better understand how the species adapts itself to the new and changing environment. Our genetic studies of the newcomers allow us to detect where they come from, to figure out the way they're moving upstream, to see how the species are evolving from historical populations, and to analyze the physiological changes that have allowed these species to adapt to local environment. A fragile river ecosystem in an ever-changing environment. Along with climate change, the Volga Basin is under pressure from human activities, industrial waste and chemical pollution being the most serious. An example of the risks can be found in Cheropovets, an industrial city near the Rybinsk Reservoir. Several iron and steel plants as well as shipbuilding, timber and fertilizer factories line the shores of the Sheskna River, one of the Volga's affluents and the main source of drinking water for the inhabitants. Most of the water is filtered and cleaned in this treatment plant. The plant treats up to 200,000 cubic meters of water and provides the city with 65,000 cubic meters of drinking water per day. There is not much pollution of human origin in the source water, so our main task are to filter the natural colorants out of the water to make it clear enough to drink and to clear out organic components of natural origin. Cheropovets' big factories are forced by law to recycle wastewater, and they claim that they do, but more needs to be done. 
That is why the European Union and Russia are working together on the Cabri Volga project. The project is being coordinated along another magnificent river, the Rhine. Here in Cologne, German economist Frank Weffering works to bolster EU-Russian cooperation to reduce the risk to the environment and improve water quality, sustainable development and water management in the Volga Basin. The Volga Basin is also part of the European continent. A good water management in the Volga Basin leads to a better European integration. Major rivers flowing through large European cities face similar problems. Now relatively free from chemical substances, the Rhine still suffers from urban waste and damage to its banks. What has been achieved with the Rhine will be crucial to help protect the Volga. If you take a look at the Rhine River, it was heavily polluted some ten years ago. It took the political will, but also industry and citizens' willingness to change the situation. We have the same situation in the Volga, and there the Russians can certainly learn by our European experiences. Researchers, politicians and environmentalists agree education is the key. Back to Cheropovets in Russia. It's a warm evening and students Nikolai, Anya and Olga are having fun in the river. Well, it should not be allowed for factories to throw out their waste into the river, nor the waste coming through the sewerage system. We need to clean the river more often. Engineer Yaroslav Senik is head of the ecology department of a Cheropovets fertilizer company and also teaches ecology. Today he's meeting Anya and friends. The Volga's survival depends on new generations. Today, young people understand how important it is to pay attention to the protection of the environment because it's them, their children and grandchildren who will live in the town and around. They know the importance and they're beginning to understand also that ecological issues can also be profitable from an economic point of view. Anyway, the ecological issues have to be dealt with because that's the demand of the law. The Volga Basin is home to some 40% of Russia's population and nearly half of the country's industry and agriculture. It also holds 25% of the world's drinkable water reserves. This shows how important it is for Russia and the whole of Europe to work towards better water management of the majestic Volga.